Hello and welcome to episode 208 of the Pixel Street Podcast. I am your host for this week, John Hansen. Uh, you may notice that I'm doing something a little different this week. I'm going to try a solo podcast. Um, if I feel a little low energy and everything, it's because I've been sick for the last few weeks. That's why I haven't been on the show. It's also why this podcast is a little bit late this week. But regardless, I am handling the duties while Joel gets ready for his wedding, which happens next week. So big congratulations to him. I'm going to try and power through this and give you guys the best energy I can. Uh, This week, we will be talking about the PlayStation VR 2, God of War Ragnarok reviews, and uh, there's a lot of Remedy games on the way. But first... I want to let you know that you can follow us on Twitter at Pixel Street. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pixel Street Videos. Uh, In the comment section, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can find a link to join our Discord community where you can come play some games with us, talk with us, um, show off some stuff, and yeah. So yeah, it's a good time. Uh, Be sure to jump on in if you ever want to. It's a... We have a lot of friends in there. We'd love to have you along, and uh, whenever we start doing our Pixel Street Pal party nights, bring you in, and we'll all have a very good time. But let's get started on the PlayStation Virtual Reality 2 headset. Uh, We've known that's been coming for a long time. Now we finally know both the price and the release date for it. It will be releasing on February 22nd. For a pretty hefty $550. So the big conversation I want to have this this week about this is, is this really worth getting? Uh, if you don't know, yeah, this is more expensive than the PlayStation 5 itself. And if you also don't know, this does not support backwards compatibility. So, for, so all of your PSVR 1 games will not work on this headset. You still have to have the original headset to play those games. And, yeah, I just think this is a very big ask for anyone to really take on. Um, I don't... I really have been trying to think of this the last few days, but I can't think of a single situation or an accessory that was more expensive than the platform it's supposed to be played on. I've, I've never seen a situation where an accessory being more expensive than that platform actually being a success... So this is a pretty big risky move for Sony, I think, in general. I think a lot of people are going to be turned off by this. Um, it's, a, it's a really hard ask because we all know, everyone here knows, that money's tight right now. It's, it's hard to just find a PlayStation 5 and buy it if you want. Now you have to spend an extra $550 to get this console, and that doesn't even come with the charging kit. I think the charging kit is like an extra $50, so you're spending like $600 to even be able to play this. That's before games. So yeah, it's a bit hard for me to say, it's a bit hard for me to recommend anyone really go for this, Uh, especially if... I, I, I've seen that this has really good tech in it, that it's pretty powerful, and all that stuff's really cool, but if we go by the PSVR one, the PSVR, the original one, that's, uh, that, that went long stretches without getting any, like, worthy games of actually, like, like, anything that was, like, worth your time. If this ends up being the same thing, are you just putting money into another platform for Sony to get money and just not get rewarded for it at all i don't know i honestly would recommend probably an oculus quest or something else just there are so many vr headsets on the market right now and it's really hard for me to recommend going for the psvr2 with this price point and everything the big thing for this is hey you don't need a computer to play these really good games but i don't know i i just I have no interest in buying this. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't have any interest anyway because I get very sick playing VR games very fast, too. I I think the first PSVR, I was able to play it for like 15 minutes and I had to stop because I just can't handle VR, apparently. Um, alongside all this news, there were some games revealed. Um, let me pull that up here. Um, we've got, let's see... 
the full list of games, Crossfire Sierra Squad, The Light Brigade, Cities VR Enhanced Edition, Cosmonius High, Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue, Jurassic World Aftermath Collection, Pistol Whip VR, Zenith The Last City, After the Fall, and Tentacular. None of that really screams to me like giant successes like Beat Saber. Um, we also know that Resident Evil Village has a VR mode, and I, I don't know if they've announced a PSVR 2 mode, but that I'm almost certain that will happen. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be ports of older games that bring them on to the PSVR 2, but man, it's just... None of this is, like, screaming $600 plus dollars worth of stuff that you need to, like, really... Like, there's no reason to get this right now. Um, oh, there was also a Dark Pictures game called the Dark Pictures Switchback VR, which is similar to the Until Dawn Rush of Blood game, I think is what it was called. So there's that. Um, yeah, just none of this is very exciting to me. Um, it's a, this is a very particular crowd, and really, if you have a lot of extra money, sure, why not? But if you have a lot of extra money, you probably already have one of the other more established and more popular headsets available for your PC. So I'm finding it really hard to see this being any kind of success. Maybe I'll be wrong here in a few months when it actually comes out, but I don't know. I need to talk to Joel. I know he had the original PSVR. Uh, he also has an Oculus Quest 2, I want to say. And he's very into uh, VR. He can handle it, and he likes it and stuff, so maybe whenever we get him on, we can ask him about it, but I'm, I don't know. This is, uh, I, I don't think this is a great move right off the beginning for PlayStation and their new VR headset. Next up, God of War Ragnarok is just around the corner, coming out on Tuesday, I want to say, so early reviews are out. I, myself... Uh, excuse me, I um, I did not get an early code, but a fellow writer on GamePro.com did, Zach Palm, and he reviewed it. He gave it a 10 out of 10, and he is not alone in that. Um, sorry, I... Stomach problems. Um, right now, God of War Ragnarok on Metacritic is sitting at a 94. That is incredibly good um let me look up real quick the original was also at 94 so people think it is on par with that game if you thought the last god of war uh that came out in 2018 was a brilliant game you're probably gonna think that as well with ragnarok surprise surprise right um let me look through here let's see some what people have to say here. So, Twinfinite, God of War Ragnarok is the epitome of cinematic gaming experiences. It's an unforgettable magical adventure teeming with treasures to find, legendary opponents to slay, and relationships to forge along the way. At its core, the experience is built around a near-perfect core gameplay loop that sinks its chaos blades into you and refuses to let go. Uh, IGN Japan says, With gorgeous visual, visuals and well-thought-out level design, God of War Ragnarok's magnificent tale has the potential to reach out to many people. It utilizes next-gen hardware to the maximum to create an experience that only a video game can offer. Alright, so yeah. A lot of people loving the game. Like I said, that was not a... That is not surprising whatsoever. Let me scroll all the way down here. One of, let's see, I'm, I want to find one of the weakest reviews for it. Uh, the Gamer gave it an 80 and said, From a gameplay perspective, I got more than I anticipated from Ragnarok. It manages to introduce new systems and gameplay mechanics consistently from beginning to end, keeping combat and exploration fresh and exciting the entire time. You can check out the most in-depth analysis of, uh, whatever, just shut up with your preview. This is a review. Gear has similar progression problems that 2018's God of War had, but now you can actually craft complex builds with cool synergies that feel impactful. 
There's an unbelievable amount of variety in the places you go and the kinds of enemies you fight compared to the previous game, and your options in combat are a lot more involved and meaningful as well. These improvements and refinements make Ragnarok a great sequel and an increased length will please the time spent equals value crowd, but the path from Faye's final resting place to the final battle Ragnarok is not nearly as composed or worthwhile as it could have been. So I think what he's saying there is that the gameplay is great, but the story is a little um, not as good as he wanted it. Uh, let's find one more review here to talk about. Um, <clears throat> uh, Destructoid gave it a 90. They said God of War Ragnarok is a fantastic showcase of what the series has to offer and a sterling example of how it still has life left in it. Well, aren't they taking a break from it after this. I don't know. Whatever. Regardless, God of War Ragnarok is a good game, and I, just like millions of other people, am very excited to play it. I actually haven't turned on my PS5 in a very long time. I have. I only use my PS5 for uh, exclusive games. So the last one that I like really got into was Horizon Forbidden West. Besides that, I, like, hop on it to watch Hulu with my daughter, who has a PS4. Um, yeah, there's not much for me to, like, really get into because all of my friends play on Xbox and everything. I can play more on PS5, but there's just not much this year for me to get excited about. So, God of War Ragnarok, I'm very much looking forward to. I'm interested to see when Game of the Year comes out how well this will fight for that spot with Elden Ring. Um... I have a suspicion that Elden Ring will still win at the Game Awards, but I don't know. God of War does a lot more for me than Elden Ring does. I'm excited for it. I am expecting it to be my Game of the Year. Um, I don't really think there's anything else that comes close to matching it. This year kind of turned out being a little disappointing in various ways. But yeah, I'm just hoping I'm feeling better enough to like really get into it when the game comes out. Um, let me know in the comments how excited you are for God of War Ragnarok, because that is, I, I think that's going to be an event. We have that, Pokemon coming out, uh, Sonic Frontiers is another game I'm very excited for. It's a lot of stuff coming out very quick here, and I need to stop being sick. <laughs> Alright, last up on our main topics here, a lot of Remedy games are in the works. So, last year at the Game Awards, uh, Remedy revealed Alan Wake 2. Very exciting stuff. Um, it is still on track to release in 2023. Um, let's see. Uh, Remedy CEO Taro Vertala said it is in its full production stage and that it's still on track to release in 2023. The game is coming together on all fronts, but there's a lot of work left to do. Um, yeah, we haven't really heard much about it since its reveal. I think there was like a little... A reveal of like small things earlier this year but uh there's a uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see where that game goes I know it's supposed to be more horror than the first game was which I thought the first game was pretty creepy to begin with um in addition to Alan Wake 2 there are two control projects in the works codenamed Condor and codenamed Heron codenamed Condor is a four-player co-op PvE title that was announced last summer. I don't remember that being announced. Vertala said, This multiplayer project is still in the proof of concept stage. Codename Heron, meanwhile, is Remini's bigger budget control game currently in the concept stage. That is very exciting to me because control was great. Um, a four-player co-op PvE game. That really screams to me something like Left 4 Dead where you're fighting all the hiss and everything. That could be really fun. Um, hopefully. If you get, like, the abilities and everything. I would love to play that. Um, that Codename Heron, that sounds like it would be a, like, Control 2 rather than, like, a spin-off multiplayer game. Uh, Remedy and Tencent are co-publishing Vanguard, a free-to-play cooperative multiplayer title that is also still in the proof-of-concept stage. When the game was announced last December, it was described as a free-to-play, cooperative PvE shooter that combines Remedy's narrative expertise in action gameplay into an immersive multiplayer experience. Beyond that, we still don't know much about Vanguard. Yeah, there just really hasn't come anything. 
And then finally, Vertala briefly wrote about the Max Payne 1 and 2 remake remedies working on alongside Rockstar Games, saying development continued with a small core team. That remake was announced in April, where we learned Remedy would handle development on Alan Wake 2 and Control's Northlight game engine. Alan Wake 2 is the only one of Remedy's projects with a release window, that being 2023. Beyond that, we have no concept of when Remedy's control projects or partnerships with Tencent and Rockstar will be completed. Until we know, blah, 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 okay, whatever. So yeah, um, I love Remedy. I think they are one of the best game developers around right now. I think pretty much everything they do is just really good. Um, I... <sighs> Hopefully, Ellen Wake 2 ends up coming out next year. I would be surprised if any of these other projects end up coming out at that time. I think you're looking at probably 2024, maybe 25 for what it could be a Control 2, and maybe that um, multiplayer game. That that kind of seems like something that would those two would like come out not on not together, but like close together, like within a year apart. I don't know though. Obviously, it kind of really depends on the scope of those games. Uh, regardless, that is very exciting news here in that Remedy has so many projects going on. And I never actually played a Max Payne game. I, uh, whenever these remakes come out, I'll probably give them a try. Um, I know Max Payne 1 and 2 were very popular games back on the PS2. Um, yeah, I just never had a chance to play them myself. Very exciting stuff coming out of Remedy. Um, hopefully you are all ex excited as I am. Let's get on to some quick news. Um, EA say their Marvel deal was never was driven by the success of their Star Wars deal. Of course they're going to say it was driven by the success of that. They would never call it a failure. Like, why would they? Um, but we all know EA did not handle their Star Wars stuff particularly well when they had the exclusive license. The good thing with this Marvel deal, I think they said that they're developing three games with them. The good thing about this deal is it's not an exclusive deal. It's just, hey, we are making these games for you. So, um, yeah, I, I want to say Iron Man game and a Black Panther game have been revealed so far, and there's probably something more on the way. Um, yeah, I... I'm calling complete bullshit on their success. I mean, it made them some money, obviously, but I don't think anyone outside of EA really looks at that as, like, a bona fide success. But hopefully they do better with these Marvel games. Ramatra is the new Overwatch 2 hero, which will come alongside the Season 2 beginning on December 9th. Uh, this is a very... Um, interesting new tank character. Um, so he, he's been teased before. If you've played in the past in the Archives event, the Storm Rising mission would end with a cutscene that had Doomfist talking to an Omnic, and, who is the head of Null Sector, one of the, like, bad groups of Omnics that are, like, ca causing terrorist attacks and everything. That's Ramatra. And he's gonna have, like, two different forms to him. Um... I've been too sick to, like, actually see if they've shown gameplay, but I don't think they have yet. Uh, it's very interesting to see uh, a new kind of tank come out that could, like, transform and stuff. That's, uh, I don't know, that's going to be very interesting to see. Hopefully he's fun. Um, but, yeah, I don't think any, like, actual gameplay has been shown yet for him. Look forward to that if you're an Overwatch fan. Next up, Lionsgate is listening to proposals on a big AAA John Wick game. Um, one of the people I saw talk about this was uh, Ryan McCaffrey from IGN. He posted something along the lines of, like, what, they're making a... They want to make a, um, a Max Payne game? Which, yeah, that I think that would kind of fit. But, yeah, it would be interesting. I would really hope that Keanu Reeves would be willing to, like, do some motion capture or at least voice his character for that. That would be really cool. Um, I'd be down to play a John Wick game, a, a big like triple A game. Like, just give me a single player narrative, okay? Move through these hallways, shoot all these people, give me some awesome like abilities and stuff. Ah, man, that would be really cool. Uh, Hideo Kojima says, Every day I am approached by ridiculous offers to buy our studio, and 
he turns them down because pretty much what he says is he wants to stay as an indie developer. He has no interest in being bought out by a bigger company. Um, yeah, it, this isn't surprising at all. Hideo Kojima is one of the biggest names in all of video games. He has been for decades now. Of course, when he has his own studio, big companies are going after him. I, it, It's not even like a sense of... It, it's probably only gotten to the point of, hey, are you interested? You want all this money? And he just turns it down. Um, yeah, he... Uh, I, I think the situation with Konami really ruined him on uh, being pretty much owned by a bigger company, which, yeah, I, I don't blame him whatever. Uh, I would be shocked if, like, Sony and Microsoft weren't one of the, weren't a couple of the names being like, hey, hey, you want to just come work for this full time? But he's turned them down. We know that he is working on an Xbox game right now. I think that's the one that's been, that he's been teasing at. Um, if you go on his Twitter, he's got like a couple pictures of uh, some actors. Um, there was the girl from Deadpool 2 and then Elle Fanning. I want to say, is their name. Um, yeah, that he's teasing something that's going to be revealed at the Game Awards, almost guaranteed that that's going to be there. So, yeah, uh, Kojima fans, you have a lot to look forward with him, and no worries of him going 100% exclusive on one platform. I think uh, what he's doing right now, where kind of swapping between like PlayStation and Xbox games, that... That could be an interesting dynamic for him going forward. Marvel Snap is adding PvP later this year. I've downloaded the game. I haven't played it myself, but I've been hearing a lot of people say that they love this game and that they're disappointed that there's no PvP. That is coming this year. Uh, when I'm feeling better, I'll actually learn what the game's about and give it a try. But yeah, you have that to look forward to. Modern Warfare 2 is the largest opening weekend in Call of Duty history, bringing in $800 million dollars. Look at that. Call of Duty is big. It's still big, even with everyone that calls it crap every year. They still buy it. Shocker, right? The Last of Us show is coming January 15th. Now that is some good news. Uh, I don't think there's... <clears throat> I don't think there's really anything coming out in January right now. So I'm... I think that's like a perfect time frame for this show to come out. Like, everyone's going to be focused on that. So excited even if that's just the first game story retold again, like, I'm so excited for it. Onoma, formerly Square Enix Montreal, has been shut down months after Embracer Group acquired them from Square Enix. Uh, luckily, there were some people in the company that have been shifted to, like, I think Eidos Montreal, so they are now working on other products. Uh, Square Enix Montreal was, that was, like, their mobile division, I want to say. Um... They made, like, the Tomb Raider Go, I think Hitman Go is one, and Hitman Sniper. Just mobile titles. I think Embracer Group is more focused on PC and console games, and that's why they shut them down. Although, it makes me wonder why they acquired them in the first place just to shut them down. And why they would change their... give them enough time to change their name. Like, you would think that they would just shut them down right away if they had no interest in um, keeping that going. Regardless, hopefully all the people that didn't get moved on, um, hopefully they find a new job soon. And last up on quick news here, Phil Spencer promises Call of Duty will stay on PlayStation as long as the platform exists. So he's just saying it's going to be on forever. I'm not taking this away when the Activision deal goes through. We all knew this was the case, but people are trying to drum up drama. and like, oh, they're, they're buying exclusives, blah, blah, blah. Call of Duty isn't going to be taken off a platform, especially when it just made like $800 million on a bad game. Okay, this one, Modern Warfare 2 isn't bad. I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, Vanguard was the one that was kind of a down spot. But yeah. All right, with all of the news out of the way, let's get into what we're playing. Since I'm the only one on the show today, I'll give some more games that I've been playing while I've been sick. Uh, starting off with Super Mario Odyssey. So, um, like I said, I've been sick for the last couple weeks. Um, 
I've spent a lot of time in my bed, so this has given me some time to play some Switch when I've been up to it. And I decided to go back and 100% the game. And I'm pretty happy that I did. Uh, I was sitting at like 750 moons beforehand. Like, I, I would go back and play it every now and then, get like a couple dozen star or moons and call it quits until I came back like months later. But now that I was just sitting there and that was all I had to focus on, I just made sure I went through, got all the moons. So there's like 880 moons that you can collect in the world. And then you need to buy like 120 more to get or 119 more to get to 999, which will turn your sales gold and then it puts a hat on top of peach's castle in the mushroom kingdom um yeah so i did all that uh very happy with it it was a game that i i don't really go for completion on big games like that mario odyssey has a lot of content in it so i was pretty happy to do that um i don't see myself Doing something like that on Breath of the Wild, even though I've done like all the missions and everything. All I need to do on Breath of the Wild is go collect all the Korok seeds. I'm not doing that. Um, that is the only thing I have left to do like 100% on that game. As much as I love that game, I'm not going for all the Korok seeds. But yeah, Super Mario Odyssey, I've now 100%ed. Very happy with that. It's a great game. Um, don't know if I'll ever go back and play it again now, but... I really enjoy that game, and I hope we get a Mario Odyssey 2 at some point. Um, before I got really sick, I was playing A Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, this is one of the games that I've been very excited for this year. I'm, I want to say I'm like five chapters in at the moment. It's just like the first game. It's beautiful. It's got a, a very sad story, and I enjoy it a lot. Um... Unfortunately, between being sick and having the busiest time of the year for video game releases, it's probably going to be a few weeks before I can get back to it, but I'll probably talk about it more then. I don't want to go into too much because it's so focused on its story, I don't want to spoil anyone that might not have gotten a chance to play it yet, but it is on Game Pass, and I highly recommend it if you've played the first one. Um, great games, and I'm they, they are... Some of my favorite AA games ever. Um, yeah, I highly recommend them if you like story games. Uh, I've also been playing Overwatch 2, of course, because, I mean, that released and that's... I love Overwatch. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say that I haven't said in the past already on Overwatch 2. I've been playing more comp lately. Um, I've been playing a lot of solo queue. Uh, not a lot of my friends like to play, I don't think, so I've been playing a lot of solo games, well, solo Q games, but I'm still enjoying the game a lot, I love it, um, I'm still a Tracer main, she's pretty strong right now, although I am kind of hoping for some kind of buff to her, like, survivability, but maybe that's just a me problem. Uh, yeah, right now in the damage category, I'm in Platinum 3, I want to say, and my tank and heal and my support, um, roles I have in, like, Gold 1 and Gold 3, I want to say, so. They're pretty close together, um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. I'm very excited for, uh, Season 2 and a new Battle Pass, because I did complete the first Battle Pass. It is... Not hard at all to complete. Uh, I don't... I very rarely even looked at the challenges, and I just get them by playing the game. Um, I'm at... So there's 80 levels to the battle pass, but once you beat that, you get prestige levels, which will unlock um, prestige like titles for you to put on your player card. And I'm at like 100 and... 15 right now I want to say is what I'm at something like that close to that so yeah it's very easy to do um still a month left of this battle pass and I've completed it so you have more than enough time to 
beat it out if uh, you have not yet. Finally, I've I tried playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I haven't played the multiplayer at all since the beta, and I haven't played Spec Ops. I've been focusing on the campaign. Originally, I was going to be reviewing the campaign for Game Per, but got sick, and I just haven't had the energy for something like that. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to put out a review yet. I haven't beaten it yet. I want to say I'm like seven missions in, something like that. Um, so far, the campaign seems fine. Uh, it, it just kind of, to me, it kind of seems like a story where it's just Infinity Ward being like, hey, remember this name from the original story? Hey, remember this guy? Yeah, you remember this? Uh-huh. Yeah, look at all these characters that you know from the original Modern Warfare games. Um, I don't really care about this story. It, It's not a bad story whatsoever. It's very in line with other Modern Warfare games. I think the 2019 Modern Warfare one, though, is, uh, I think that's a much better campaign than this one. Um, but yeah, it's just fine. I, it's not something I recommend someone going out of their way to play if they're not into campaign stuff, but yeah, it's just all okay. But yeah, that is going to do it for episode 208 of the Pixel Street Podcast. I'm very sorry for my low energy and everything. I'm trying to not be sick anymore. Um, hopefully the conversation was enough to keep you interested, though. I am John Hansen. You can find me on Twitter, at Revex Shadows. You can also find my writing on GamePer.com, even though I haven't worked in weeks because I've been so down and uh. But hopefully that will... F- change this coming week uh joel can be found on twitter at campo 63 i want to say campo 63 is also his twitch account uh he likes to stream there um you can follow both of this you can follow the pixel street podcast well just the pixel street twitter at pixel street uh subscribe to us on youtube pixel street videos uh join our discord talk with us play with us uh joel's uh been posting some pictures of a wedding gift he got from his soon-to-be bride of a halo what is it a halo decanter it's a master chief decanter set i don't know what a decanter is but it looks like alcohol stuff (laughs) so yeah he looks pretty excited about that so yeah Go on our Discord to see what that's all about. Um, With that said, thank you for listening or watching. Be sure to rate us wherever you've uh, been seeing the podcast. We really appreciate it. Uh, Give us a truthful rating if it needs... If you need to see something better out of us, let us know. Um, Yeah, with that out of the way, we will catch you on the next one. Bye!